They knew the sword at once. It had killed hundreds of goblins in its time, when the fair elves of Gondolin hunted them in the hills or did battle before their walls. They had called it Orchrist, Goblin Cleaver, but the goblins called it simply Biter. They hated it, and hated worse anyone that carried it. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we will be looking at the small yet interesting history of the sword Orchrist, originally made in Gondolin and carried by Thorn Oakenshield in later days. This video finishes up the trio of the Swords of Gondolin, so please check out the videos on Sting and Glamdring as well, linked alongside some articles and other videos in the description and cards. My friends, thank you all so much for being here. Let's begin our tale. The Sword Orchrist, or Goblin Cleaver in Sindarin, later known as the Biter by Goblins, was forged in Gondolin sometime before its fall, and it was considered to be the mate of the weapon Glamdring. Like Glamdring and the much smaller sword Sting, and other weapons of the Gondolindrim, it would glow in the presence of orcs. Now being the mate of the sword Glamdring, which was born by King Torgon himself, Orchrist was also quite incredible in its craft, showing a decorated scabbard, jeweled hilt, and beautiful steel, as well as runes that told its name. In the Hobbit film, it had a dragon's tooth in the hilt, and had runes speaking to that fact, but such is not true in the canon. According to the goblins of Goblin Town in the Third Age, this sword had killed hundreds of goblins or orcs in its time, abroad and near or in Gondolin. Now this, along with its status as the mate of Glamdring, meant it was most certainly wielded by someone of great importance within the city of Gondolin. My personal headcanon has always regarded the bearer of this blade to be Ecthelion of the Fountain, for he was known as one of the great warriors of Gondolin. He also fought alongside his king in the Nernaith Arnoidiad, the Battle of Unnumbered Tears, meaning he also slew many goblins abroad from the city as well, and he perished in the fall of Gondolin, like Torgon, meaning that the two swords, Glamdring and Orchrist, and likely Sting somewhere else, would be lost around the same time in the same battle. Now, there would be plenty of lords who might have called this sword theirs, many lords of the houses of Gondolin, including Glorfindel himself, or even the son-in-law of the king, the Mantor, or the sword could have also belonged to the person who wielded its mate, Torgon himself. But I like to think Ecthelion bore this blade, even before fighting Gothmog, the greatest of Balrogs. Either way, in 510 of the First Age, Orchrist would likely be lost in the fall of Gondolin alongside the other two swords, and just like Glamdring and Sting would come by brigands or goblins or other elves to at last the Troll Cave near Rivendell and the Troll Shaws. And in 2941, it would be rediscovered by the Free Peoples after the three trolls were turned to stone during the quest of Erebor. Now, Orchrist would follow a shorter story than Glamdring and Sting, for this would be the final year that Orchrist saw any combat. It would be carried by Thorn Oakenshield, King of the Longbeards, as he recognized the sword's quality in the Troll Cave, and soon after brought it to Elrond Half-Elven in Rivendell, who also told of the heritage of the sword. Telling Thorn and the others its runes read the name Orchrist, and that it was a famous blade. Thorin would bear it with honor, hoping that it would cleave goblins again, and Elrond responded that the wish would soon be granted in the mountains. Indeed, after Rivendell, Thorin would lead his company into the Misty Mountains, and they would be captured by goblins, many who recognized and feared the blade, causing the goblins to beat the dwarves until Gandalf saved them, and Thorin fought the goblins with his elvish weapon, a symbol of dwarven and elven honor and power in one dwarf. He did bear this sword with honor, and in fact, since we know not who bore it in the First Age, Orchrist was more Thorin's sword than any other that we know of. However, when Thorin was captured by the Wood Elves of Thranduil in Mirkwood, they took this elvish weapon from him, both for being their prisoner, and likely for this being a weapon of their kin from long ago. So indeed, for the rest of the quest, Thorin had his sword not and surely every weapon to come into his hands after served him less well than Orchrist, until finally, during the Battle of Five Armies, Thorin sustained wounds that would end his life. But he passed away a friend of elves and men, and one worthy to have Orchrist upon his tomb for the rest of the history of Middle-earth, as indeed Thranduil laid this sword upon his tomb. It was said in songs afterwards that the sword gleamed ever if foes approached, and the mountain could never be taken from the dwarves by surprise. It is a beautiful sentiment, this sword, forged by the High Elves of Gondolin in the ancient days, which had slain many orcs and goblins by both an elven and a dwarven bearer, was now an artifact of protection for the Lonely Mountain. 
The sword was a legacy of friendship and honor between elf and dwarf, and it would stop Erebor from ever coming to ruin like Gondolin did, by surprise. At least according to these songs. And so on that note, we come to the end of our tale about the sword Orcrist, which protected Thorin's kingdom and folk for the rest of the history of Erebor. From this tale, we see an amazing lesson that is worthy of remembrance. We must honor one another, the legacies and cultures of all peoples, just as both Thorn and Thranduil did with Orcrist. And in doing so, we can forge friendships that last beyond the years of one lifetime, or even one age of the world. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this rather short but still important Artifacts of Arda video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this video. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections on Orcrist? Let me know in the comments below. I really like the sword, even if its legacy is not as large as other weapons in the Legendarium, for its symbol is that of friendship and union between elves and dwarves, and the sword was surely revered by both after the events of The Hobbit. With Galadriel's hair, Gimli eventually made a similar symbol of friendship. Thanks to our Valar tier patrons, Adrian de la Tour, Chris Ortner, Cal Wetzel, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putnam, Mark Kralik, Blair Scout, Merton, John Hume, Jennifer Wood, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Ben Gardner, Condar, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrolik, Kuzan, Brandon Glidden, Molly Sullivan, and Daniel Burns. Thank you so much, and thanks to all of our patrons and YouTube members. It really means a lot. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with a video on why the Witch King was so powerful. A Middle Earth Explained video. You all are the best. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.